Hello and welcome to today's episode of Taekwondo Life Magazine Live. My name is Mark Sorianis. I'm your host. I'm a third Don Black Belt and I'm the editor-in-chief of Taekwondo Life Magazine. Taekwondo Life Magazine is a member of the Believe Network. Do you believe? We are about halfway through the summer. Exciting times. We are the AAU Nationals just finished. And we are in the home stretch to the USAT Nationals and the President's Cup, a world taekwondo event. It will be taking place later this summer in Jacksonville, Florida. Our partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find out all of the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including the NBA Summer League, Major League Baseball, the latest fighting news, and even next season's early NFL futures. Head to the website, betonline.ag, or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just remember, use our promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, to get your bonus and get into action. Bet online, where the gaming starts. So today's program is short. I wanted to talk about something that I sort of been on my mind, um, a little bit controversial, I think, probably going to get me in a little bit of trouble, probably an episode I probably should have kept to myself. But I want to talk a little bit about concussions and concussion protocol. Now, concussions, obviously, we are a contact sport, and for most of our serious competitive divisions, there is not only head contact, but favoring of head contact, right? So it's more points to hit to the head, and with a spinning kick, it is the most amount of points to hit to the head with an exciting head, which is fine. And I referee, as most of you probably know, and safety is an issue and medical is an issue. And we, because of the fact that Head scoring is basically any type of scoring that touches the head. It is not necessarily done with the force and the vigor of the body, plus, of course, just simply the logistics of it, right? A easier, more powerful to kick to the body than it is to kick to the head. But that being said, there are possibilities for head trauma. There are possibilities for concussions. There are possibilities for knockouts. Does it happen? It's rare. Uh, Injuries can occur, broken nose. However, it can occur. That's part of the sport. We we understand that, right? It's a combat sport. It's not, uh, Pumse is a non-contact aspect of martial arts, but sparring, of course, is, and we know that. And it's exciting, and it's fun to watch. And we always take safety as a referee, as a coach, as a trainer, um, seriously, but there's always that possibility that it can occur. So, There are concussion protocols that are in place. USAT is pretty strict about it. Um, I get the sense from reading AAU's materials that AAU is strict about it. And if you look at the pathways to nationals, one of the things, at least this is my understanding, and please, anyone, if I'm ever wrong on anything, which certainly could happen, feel free to correct me, that the last Grand Prix, which was our Grand Prix in June in Daytona, that's the Grand Prix East, is at least 30 days separation between that event and nationals, not simply to give people time to prepare, not simply time for paperwork, not simply time for logistics, but because a concussion protocol would make it impossible for an athlete who might have received a concussion in a Grand Prix event to compete in nationals, but for the gap of time between Grand Prix and Nationals. To me, does that make sense? Absolutely. Great great um, protocol, sensible, makes sense. I know it's treated very seriously because I'm on that event. But then, as I looked at the Facebook posts and the social media posts from AAU and their Nationals, which took place this week in Las Vegas, I saw many familiar faces many familiar athletes who were competing at the Nationals for AAU, and that's understandable. And for the large, vast majority of those, 
there's no issue. However, where what is all of this jibber jabber that I'm talking about leading up to? Well, if the AAU Nationals take place halfway between Grand Prix East and the USAT Nationals, if there are events who uh, athletes who would have received a concussion at Grand Prix East, is there something that prohibits them from competing less than 30 days in AAU? And if someone competes at AAU Nationals and receives a concussion, is there something that co- prohibits them from competing in the USAT Nationals, which is less than 30 days away? And the long and short answer is yes and no. No and yes actually is probably more likely. Well, what do I mean? Well, AAU is its own organization. USAT is its own organization. So in theory, from a paperwork standpoint, there is nothing that protects an athlete from an organizational systemic standpoint from competing in all of these events and potentially having a head trauma, having a concussion, and competing with less than the recommended 30-day time period. Now, I did ask the question to people that I respect to see how it plays itself out. And what I was told, which I do understand and I do respect, is, well, it's not only the athletes that overlap, but you have parents, obviously, of these athletes. You have coaches, you have masters, and you have referees. And it is incumbent upon them to address this issue if it comes to their awareness. Do I agree with that? Do I understand that? Do I believe in my heart of heart that we all care about the well-being of these athletes? Yes, I do. However, the question I'm simply raising today, one that we can think about, we don't have an answer for is, wouldn't it make more sense for the AAU nationals to either share a database with USAT or that the USAT and AAU nationals not be scheduled in a way where the possibility exists that an athlete can circumvent the concussion protocols to compete. Now you'd say, why would an athlete do that? Well, the only reason an athlete would do that is because athletes tend to think that they're You know, immortal athletes tend to think that they're superstars. They feel okay. They don't care about the medical implications. They're on an Olympic path. They're looking to succeed. And do I understand that? Of course. It's that drive. It's that ambition. It is that vigor that makes them successful. However, it is our role as adults, our role as an organization, our role as professionals to sometimes help protect people from themselves. So I raise this question, I raise this issue, and I ask you to consider, am I missing everything, anything? Did I get everything? Should we have a different schedule? How can it be addressed? Let's talk. If we want to really talk about concussions and treat them seriously, then let's talk about what we really need to do. This is Mark Zarianis. I'm signing off, and this episode has been presented to you by our friends at Bet Online. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing you on the mat.